But let's do a chit chat about the device itself. So this is a very interesting overall as a configuration. So they went for the four shoulder buttons and yeah, there is not a lot of differences in the height. So like the first generation of laser devices, they had the same issues at the back or finding a speaker and this thing is quite loud. So you can really see over here that we're having one tiny battery, but it seems to be having a 2000 milliamp where the sticker says like 1500, okay, that's interesting. Overall, we're having over here no connections whatsoever because the over here at the right side we're getting the power an option for micro sd card and the reset at the bottom we're finding some interesting connections like an hdmi mini then we're having over here the headphone jack and usb and the mini usb for charging but particularly when it comes to this particular port i just wanted to see what happens if we're going to be plugging in the hdmi and the usb can we use this thing like in game box all right, so let's do a chit chat about how comfortable this device is. So first of all, the configuration is weird. We have seen this before. I think it was with the POW Kitty having the two analog sticks and they chose for the analog sticks of the slider kind. And I am not a bad, I'm not a big fan of these things, but however, there's nothing to do about it. The D-pad itself does have a very nice curve to it, but it has a very long travel and a lot of resistance underneath. Select start, escape and the volume over here. And then of course, last but not least, the ABXY. And if you're going to be looking at this, this is absolutely very strange configuration and not comfortable at all. So the reason why, because if you're going to be using this with the D-pad, or an analog stick, you, I find it such a weird configuration that they put the ABXY button at the right bottom corner. That is so weird. This device has, let's say, the simple things like 8-bit, 6-bit and some arcade. With arcade, um, the more demanding games like Killer Instinct, Tekken Mame, those who are not here on here, they will not work at all. And going to the next page, because you have two pages over here. We're having music, photos, dictionary. And in here we find the settings. Settings, we're having display settings, brightness, can we change out there, powering off. Okay, idle time and sleeping time can be adjusted. File sorting mode, that's kind of interesting that they edit this. And then having the language and advance with some information. Here we're finding the storage, the number, this is actually version number one. The key tune can be changed to off and one other version. Format the internal memory, don't do this. Seriously, like if you're going to be doing this, everything will be excellent. <laughs> what it says, it will like wipe everything and reset. It's going to be resetting all of the settings. But that's actually what it is when it comes to the menu. And let's boot up a game and let's see how that actually works out. So let's choose GBA, inherent getting building games and internal memory. It's kind of weird that they have two different choices. Uh, well, let's see, internal memory. And this is actually the SD card, I'm guessing. That is not implemented. You can boot up a game like that. Just boot it up a couple of seconds without any problem. Pressing the escape button will give you the special menu, giving you the quick load, quick save, and the settings in here. Sound output, and that's kind of weird that we have the option for on and off screen size. And that is kind of cool that we're having scale over here. So an SPS ratio have been implemented. And let's go back to the game. And whoa, yeah, okay. That is not the way how we actually want to screen size so let's put it on full i don't know what's going on with that but okay that seems to be working fine but that's kind of weird so we're going to be testing that particular part out with the system ratio with different emulators but not be surprised that's going to be giving us a lot of issues okay but after some time it seems to be booting up but let's get into the gameplay and let's showcase how it actually work out because that is the thing with these devices sometimes you do find some great performance you can just see that so far so good and that is the thing i don't understand like why where where are they going wrong with this because we do have some great overall performance with playstation so for playstation is kind of cool so if you're searching for a really cheap device we do have the option but i don't know if the emulator running on this supports every game because tekken doesn't warn at all maybe it has to do something with the file but pandemonium seems to be working just great But is it something you should pick up for PlayStation simulation? It's very, like say, debatable because there are so many ways you can now play PlayStation 1. Another thing I wanted to see what happens if you're going to be messing with the SPS ratio and HDMI out. Screen size, let's see what happens. Return to the game. Okay, that seems to be working just fine. So let's plug this thing into the HDMI port on top and let's see if this functionality works in the game or do we need to reset it or whatsoever. So let's start off with some NES and Battle City. 
I do wonder about one particular thing. It's like, how does it actually work when it comes to the SBS ratio? Because that was kind of weird. Whoa, that flashing thing was not supposed to be happening. I don't also know what's going to be on what's happening with the freaking like audio. Do we need to hold it? Or do I need to go out of the, oh, there we go. So in the game itself, it doesn't work at all. That is some weird shit going on. Seriously. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to see what happens if you're going to be doing the express ratio. Oh crap, I... Ah, oh, they completely like swapped everything around. And I mean, particularly when it comes to the A and B way because B is entering and A is going back. It's so freaking confusing. But what I actually wanted to try is going to the settings and having the screen set to scale. Let's see how that looks with a different emulator. Oh. Okay, so with NES seems to be working just fine. That flashing thing is not good. That is not normal. I did notice when you're setting this to this SPS ratio, it will automatically put every single emulator in that certain overall, let's say, SPS ratio. So getting into the Game Boy Classic, you do see some glitches going on. That is not like it's supposed to be. So I cannot really like enjoy playing these weird Game Boy games. Yeah, okay, so it's glitching all the way. So let's go back to the normal settings. Screen size, full screen. Let's see if it still has the same problem. Okay, so the problem is actually when you're going to be putting in the aspect ratio in, it's going to be having the same weird glitches going on. So that is quite unfortunate. So let's move on to some 16-bit overall emulation. But it seems to be they completely messed it up when it comes to the emulation performance of 60-bit. Oh boy, this is such a bummer. One of my favorite systems. So let's go back to the full screen. From now on, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Let's reboot it again and let's see if there's going to be having a better overall performance. No, I can see it from the start that it's going to be absolutely horrible emulation performance. You know, and that's the problem with these, let's say, low budget things from AliExpress sometimes that you just don't know what you're getting. And this is just one of the reasons why I started making these reviews to basically warn you about these crappy products because this is just unplayable. Moving on to some Neo Geo and there are actually two reasons we're going to be using this particular game. One is that we're going to be testing the D-pad and two of course the emulation performance. But so far I can just see in here that everything seems to be working just fine. Mm, the D-pad is quite awful to a certain point that it's more like a feel thing. And what I wanted to say is that we're actually going to be playing this. You'll see that I do have to struggle to actually get some moves out. Where I personally prefer to play with the analog stick. But the analog stick is just as worse because it's absolutely horrible, those slider joystick thingies. So for controls and fighting games, this is not the way I want to play. But we do have some great overall performance when it comes to emulation of Neo Geo. Okay, but let's get into the main situation. And I can just hear that... We do have like a huge problem when it comes to, let's say, the audio itself. Where the speed of the game is great, you can just hear... The music sounds kind of weird. Yeah, it's absolutely strange. Or this is just a different way to play, but... I can remember that this game was completely having a different soundtrack. It sounds so off. Okay, so let's get into the HDMI part. So I'm going to be using a converter. What's kind of weird that we do have this on the bottom part. So yeah, that's not going to be very convenient. But however, let's plug this thing in. Let's see what happens. If it's going to be booting automatically into the device itself. That would be great. I see there's going to be signal. Ah, there we go. Okay, so the S plus ratio doesn't work for the TV out. So far I can see. That's absolutely awesome, so we can just enjoy yourself. Let's double check it. Settings, screen size, scale, nope, 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 nope. So the, it's kind of interesting that the software itself doesn't really work when it comes to, let's say, the TVO function. So and then there's, of course, the other thing that we can check out. So what happens if you're going to be using this with a controller? So I'm getting the X input Xbox. The reason why, because most devices are compatible with this. Okay, so let's plug this thing in. So it will automatically show maybe something that doesn't show anything at all. So when it comes to this situation, 
maybe we can reboot the game itself or the emulator just to see what happens we don't have anything going on so it looks like this thing doesn't want to be like configured at all but that's quite unfortunate so when it comes to the controller that part is quite difficult to get this thing to be working as a game system would be cool like to plug this thing in and just play it like that Thank you.